Welcome to the Sky This Month, starting December the 11th, 2020. I'd like to cover two topics. First of all is the Jupiter-Saturn conjunction, which will take place on December the 21st. And the second is a more general topic, tracking moonrise. But first, don't forget a couple of important uh, other events. Number one is tomorrow, Saturday, December the 12th, between 1 and 1.45 p.m., so that's just afternoon, the sliver of the crescent moon will hide Venus. You'll be able to see it with binoculars if the weather is clear. And then Sunday night, December the 13th, will be the height of the Gemini meteor shower. So if there's clear patches of sky, bundle up and go out and have a look. Now to the Jupiter-Saturn conjunction. First of all, this is a very rare event. The last time this was visible from the Earth and was as close uh, was in the 1200s AD. So this is uh, pretty rare. It requires a low southwestern horizon. And for that reason, I would suggest that you practice by going out and viewing Jupiter and Saturn uh, in the days leading up to the conjunction. The best time to view it is around 5.30 p.m. because within an hour it will have dropped below the horizon. So uh, here is where the Jupiter and Saturn are today at 5.30 p.m. and they're just a little above uh, 10 degrees above the, the horizon in the southwestern sky. So that's why you need to get out fairly early. Uh, a week from now, 5.30 p.m., they'll be a little bit lower in the sky, but you can see they're much closer together. The next day, Saturday, Sunday. So you can see that even if uh, Monday ends up being a little bit cloudy, if you can see it on Sunday or, or Tuesday, you'll be pretty good. This is Tuesday, December the 22nd. And then finally, by Wednesday, they will have moved measurably farther apart. Again, quite low in the sky, this is less than 10 degrees above the southwestern horizon. If you have a telescope, then you may well be able to see both Saturn and uh, Venus in the same uh, view. Uh, if you have a binoculars, definitely you will be able to see them, but of course you wouldn't likely be able to see uh, the moons or the ring of Saturn. Let's go on to the subject of tracking moonrise. In 1979, my fiance started my astronomy career by telling me that in summer, the sunrise is in the northeast, and I, I didn't believe her. And when I found out that she was right, I thought, wow, I've got to get out. I've got to get out more and have a look at what's going on up there. Well, in 2020, now my wife said, where is moonrise? I can predict where sunrise is now, but moonrise seems pretty random. So I did research and came up with a couple of key ideas. The first is that the moon does in one month what the sun does in one year. And so that would be the same for moonrise and sunrise. It takes the, the moon a month to do what sunrise does in one year. And then the second principle is the new moon rises roughly where the sun rises. So that kind of locks it in uh, according to the time of year. So let's look at the first principle. The moon does in one month what the, takes the sun a year. Well, first of all, it turns out that the lunar orbit around the Earth lies pretty close to the yearly path of the sun, and so that means that you can substitute one for the other. They're not going to stray off very far from each other. Secondly, we know that sunrise swings north and south along the eastern horizon during the year. So that means then that moonrise is going to swing north and south along the eastern horizon in a month. Let's take a look at what, how that would actually work out. So this is the new moon on December the 14th, 2020. So that's just a couple of days from now. And uh, the sun is as far south as it's going to get. <clears throat> it's pretty close to the uh, winter solstice. 
Um, now, I've superimposed the new moon on the sun, uh, but I've actually made it four times larger than it actually is so we can see it in the, in the diagram. So let's begin. Uh, this is the start of the month. Two days later, it's just shifted a little bit farther south to complete its swing south. And then two days later, its swing starts swinging north, four days old, six days old, eight days old, 10, 12, 14 days old. Now, by the time it's 14 days old, it's become the new moon. And so the new moon is going to be at the opposite end of the cycle or the opposite place in the cycle from wherever the sun is. And then uh, 16 days old, it's barely shifted at all. And then 18, 20, 22, 24, 26, 28. And of course, it actually takes... 29 days to do 28 lunar days because uh, the lunar day is slightly longer than the solar day. Okay, now let's just talk about the new moon rise. It, it rises roughly where the sun rises and that makes logical sense because the new moon is very close to the sun. That's why we can't see it. It's lost in the sun's glare. So that that pegs where the moon is in relation to the sun, basically at the same place. Now, for example, let's just imagine we're talking about where will a new moon rise in March? So we have to think, okay, well, where does the sun rise in March? Oh, it's getting pretty close to due east. So that means that the moon is going to also rise roughly due east. Now, I just checked that, and for March the 13th, which will be the new moon in 2021, uh, the, the new moon rises 5 degrees south of east. So that's what I mean by roughly. Uh, and so that's pretty good. But then there's another new moon on June the 10th. Where will that rise? Well, okay. The June the 10th is starting to move quickly towards, or to, towards the summer solstice, which is a as far north as the sun is going to get. So it's going to be fairly far north of east. Turns out it's 38 degrees north of east. And somewhat by coincidence, the sun is also exactly 38 degrees north of east. And that's as far north as it's going to get. Okay, so that is, enables us to predict new moon rise. The last thing is we need to know is that the moon is moving faster than the sun through this cycle. So, for instance, in March, uh, sunrise is due east and is slowly marching northward. Well, so that would mean then that the new moon rises roughly due east and moonrise will move rapidly north from one day to the next. By the time it's gone through the first quarter of a cycle, it will have reached its northern extreme. Then, by the time it's uh, uh, full moon, it will have swung back to due east. So it will be now in the opposite uh, part of the cycle from the sun, which is roughly due east moving north. We're now due east moving south. And then the last quarter, it will reach the southern extreme, um, in this case, 35 degrees south of east. And then by the next full moon, it will be uh, moved slightly north of east where the sun is. So this should give you uh, an idea of how to predict where the moon will rise. Now, this is a solar analemma. And this uh, is a, a picture taken throughout the year at the same time of day. So in this case, it was at 8 a.m., so just after sun up. This particular picture was taken from January the 29th, 2013 to January the 6th, 2014. So this represents a lot of dedication. By my estimate, counting the number of uh, suns that are there in the picture, it was taken every 10 days. And uh, the caption indicates that it was Budapest. We're actually looking across the Danube River and this wonderful piece of work was done by Georgi Sopanyai. 
So um, by correlating this with other what I know about the analemma, I estimate that March the 15th is right where that white dot is. And that's going to be important because we're going to then look at what happens to the moon starting on March the 15th. What does the sun do? Well, the sun continues to um, move uh, north or move higher in the sky towards June. And then it gets to the peak on June the, the uh, 21st or thereabouts. And then it begins to go lower in the sky, very down till finally it's December the the 21st or thereabouts, and then it's at the very lowest point, and then it comes back up, and we're back to the next March. So that's how the sun so cycles around, and this figure eight pattern is caused by complications in the orbit of the sun and the tilt of the earth. Now let's look at what does the moon do in a month, and we could uh, actually call, call this a lunar analemma. This is exactly the same scene. We're looking across the Danube at uh, Budapest, same buildings. Um, and uh, this was done from March the 15th to April the 15th, 2014. So just after uh, Gheorghe had, uh, Gheorghe had uh, finished his um, solar analemma, he tried to do the lunar analemma. He took this picture every 24 hours at 50 minutes and 48 seconds. Remember I was saying that a, a lunar day is longer than a solar day. Well, there it is. It turns out that uh, March the 16th was a full moon and uh, therefore, uh, thinking back to that analemma, it's on the opposite side of where the um, March 15th sun is, the opposite side of that figure eight pattern. And April the 15th was a full moon, so that completed the cycle. So there's March the 15th, and um, uh, then there's the full moon on March the 15th. Remember, the, sun, the, the moon is on the opposite part of the cycle from the uh, the sun because it started out at full and so it's going lower in the sky and then starts coming back up and uh, reaches the, the highest point and then starts coming back and finally it ends up at eight, April 15th and it's a full moon and notice it's not exactly repeating the pattern it's a little bit different than the previous month in fact it's a little bit higher up in the sky which is exactly what we would expect because the, the, um, the sun is getting higher in the sky and the sun and the moon track, the, the new moon tracks the sun. So this is what we would expect. So this is uh, an example of a, a lunar analemma. It's not a perfect figure eight because there's, uh, it's, the moon, moon motion is just a little bit more complicated than this. So, there was the start of the month, there was the end of the month. And this, uh, again, this is a beautiful piece of work and this certainly takes a, a fair amount of effort to do. So I hope I've given you a pretty good idea of how to track where the moon is going to rise, equivalently where it's going to set. So uh, I hope you have a, a very Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year, and we'll see you in January.